Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we begin a new devotional on what the Bible has to say about dealing with anxiety. If you missed yesterday's video, Pastor Chris kind of introduced the idea and how you can get the most out of these videos. I want to encourage you as you come on today and take a look that you leave us a comment so we know who's here. Give us some likes, some shares, anything that you do to help this get in front of more people. We know that there's lots of people who are feeling anxious during this situation and generally in life. And so we want to share some hope, some insight from the Bible, and let people know that they're not alone. And we'd love for uh, other people to hear about it, and you're a big part of that. So give us a comment, let us know you're here. If something hits you, go ahead and say amen. And actually, the way that you get the most out of this is to read the devotional yourself. You can download this entire devotional series from the YouVersion Bible app. And I recommend you download that app right now if you don't. Uh, that way you'll have the Bible with you wherever you go, not just during this pandemic, but all the time. And so if you want to read the study ahead of time, you can read the scripture, you can read the devotional thought, and that will actually give you something. If you'd like to weigh in during these conversations, it would be great to interact a little bit. And that's how you'll get the most out of this, because these videos are just supplemental to what you're doing for your faith. So I encourage you to read the Bible for yourselves. God will speak to you, and you'll get more out of what he says than anything I could say to you. But let's get into it today. So today we're talking about anxiety. What is anxiety? The, the definition is an abnormal and overwhelming sense of apprehension and fear. I don't know if you can identify with that. Uh, we're anxious people. Uh, I like how Max Lucado lays it out in one of his books. He says, anxiety is a low-grade fear, an edginess, a dread, a cold wind that won't stop howling. It's not so much a storm as the certainty that one is coming, always coming. Sunny days are just an interlude. You can't relax. You can't let your guard down. All peace is temporary and short term. I don't know about you, but that pretty well describes me. Anyone else? Why you just feel anxious all the time. People are like, hey, what are you anxious about? I don't know. Should I feel anxious too? Now I have two anxious people. And it's just that thing where there's this sense of impending doom. If something's not wrong, you're wondering what's not, what haven't I noticed? What's going to go wrong next? And I remember doing some research for a sermon series we did two years ago and came across this article in Psychology Today that said, anxiety has been increasing. Quote, the average high school student today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the early 1950s. We are getting more anxious every decade, end quote. And then they mentioned the idea that the demands on us is increasing year over year. And, and that fact is a little bit sobering. It's kind of disappointing, but honestly, it's not all that surprising. Uh, while fear and anxiety try to limit our impact, right? We all, we all know what it's like to feel hemmed in, to feel like anxiety is pressing down on us. God wants to leverage our strength. God wants to leverage what he's done in us to bring hope and healing to the hurting world around us, to, to limit the effects of anxiety and to magnify how great God is. An extraordinary God did not make any of his children to be just ordinary. Anxiety always detracts from what God has designed us to do. And so while this devotion isn't a cure-all for anxiety, hopefully it will equip you and set you in the right direction towards peace in the middle of anxiety. So listen to what the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. It says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him, all glory to him forever and ever. Amen. God is a God of peace. In fact, Jesus is our peace. Peace is not the absence of anxiety, then. It's the presence of Jesus. The same Jesus who was raised from the dead, conquering death and the grave, can conquer our anxiety, too. The one we trust for our eternity, we can trust with our peace and our anxieties day by day. It's Jesus who's going to equip you as sure as he died for you, right? We talked about that during the communion service. His promise is good. His promise is not only to save you, but to equip you with all you need to do his will each and every day. He'll equip you. In other words, anxiety is a reminder to pray, to look for the equipment, to go back to God so that he can equip you through the situation. When you feel anxious, pray. When you feel anxious, go ahead and worship. Sing a song or recall a scripture verse. Turn on some, some worship music. Stream one of the old services listening to the worship time and just honor God for who he is because worship doesn't change the situation, but it will change your perspective. And so as our perspective change, God, God will produce in us something of eternal value. Often God doesn't change the situation that produces anxiety. He changes us. And that brings glory to God, and it strengthens us because we live in an anxiety-inducing world. Let's be honest about it. We need a God who takes us through anxiety, not around it. 
It's not going to be easy. It's, it's going to take some work, but it's absolutely worth it. In fact, that's one of the main points for Sunday's sermon, and I hope you'll join us online, because God goes before us, but we still have to get in line behind him and fight the battles that he's led us to. So let me end this devotional thought with a little challenge, and every day we'll have a kind of a challenge follow-up, but we have to understand that since anxiety is no joke, we're not meant to deal with it alone, and so if you're dealing with anxiety, I want to challenge you to talk to somebody. We absolutely believe that God works through the wisdom of our friends, of counselors, of doctors to help us find healing in our lives. And if you need to talk to a professional, do it. Listen, you can have Jesus as your savior and see a counselor or a psychiatrist. If you need someone to talk to, to reach out to, call, call me, <laughs> reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to talk with you. Reach out to your life group leaders. Reach out to a trusted friend. God has given us the gift of each other during this anxiety-inducing times. I need you. You need me. We need Jesus. And Jesus is going to equip us to do all that we need to do and to do it well, even in the face of anxiety. Let me pray for you today. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your words of comfort that you didn't say we would never face anxious times, but you said that you would take us through them that you would equip, equip us to do what you called us to do, and you would get glory out of it. So God, I pray you would just meet with people who are feeling anxious right now, that you would give peace to their heart, remind them who you are, and God, that you didn't bring them this far to abandon them. God, I pray as they focus on your goodness today, you will give them that same grace tomorrow. So Father, I pray you would use us to bring hope and peace to an anxious world. So as we receive, help us give it away. Thank you, Father, for your love, and thank you that you're not done with us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for spending a little time with us this morning. Go ahead and give us a like, give us a share. Let us know that you're here. And thank you for spending a couple minutes with us. Have a great day.